Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. Greetings, great bodhisattvas. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I think it would only make sense to put things in a little bit of context here since uh, we are recording this. And this can be watched at almost any time, anywhere, uh, for as long as the ones and zeros align themselves into the correct order. Uh, tonight, uh, there was rioting in uh, Washington, D.C. in uh, response to the uh, electrical <laughs> electoral college uh, supposedly certifying the votes of the 46th uh, president of the United States. And I know we have some people here, uh, at least one who's not from the U.S. and possibly more, although I can't see who that little head is down the bottom of the screen there. But... Um, so I was thinking, I had a, a Dharma talk prepared for tonight. And all this happened and it was like, oh geez, well, okay. So I've got this talk prepared and maybe we should act as if nothing out of the ordinary is going on. And I just give the same talk. And then upon reflecting, it was more, I want to give this talk. I think it would be appropriate. I, 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 I. And the point of sharing the Dharma is not I oriented, it's you oriented. Skillful means is when we perceive the listener perceive the student more than we proceed perceive ourselves. I can say the greatest, most profound, most prajna bodhi oriented statement ever. And if the other person that's listening to it is not ready, to hear that, then it serves them no purpose. And that in consequence means that my duty as a bodhisattva is being unfulfilled. So I ditched that particular Dharma talk and threw together a few things that uh, I thought might be appropriate for tonight. And uh, there are a couple of things I'd like to read you, and I'm trying to decide which order they would be best in, but I think we'll go this direction. It's from the Diamond Sutra. The Buddha told Subhuti, so it is, so it is. If someone hears this sutra and is not frightened, alarmed, or terrified, you should know that person is most rare. And why? Subhuti, the foremost paramita, is spoken of by the Tathagata is, uh, as no foremost paramita. Therefore, it is called the foremost paramita. Subhuti, the Paramita of patience is spoken of by the Tathagata as no paramita of patience. Therefore, it is called the paramita of patience. And why? Subhuti, it is as in the past when the king of Kalinga dismembered my body. At that time, I had no mark of self, no mark of others, no mark of living beings, and no mark of life. And why? When I was cut from limb to limb, if I had a mark of self, a mark of others, a mark of living beings, or a mark of life, I would have been outraged. 
So going any further, I recall that in the past for 500 lives, I was the patient immortal. During all those lives, I had no mark of self, no mark of others, no mark of living beings, and no mark of life. For that reason, Savudi, a bodhisattva should, relinquishing all marks, produce the heart of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. He should produce that heart without dwelling in forms. He should produce that heart without dwelling in sound, smells, taste, tangible objects, or dharmas. He should produce that heart which does not dwell anywhere. Any dwelling of the heart is no dwelling. Therefore, the Buddha says, the heart of a Buddha, excuse me, the heart of a Bodhisattva should not dwell in forms when he gives. Sabudi, so a Bodhisattva, to the benefit of all beings, should give thus. All marks are spoken of by the Tathagata as no marks and all living beings are spoken of as no living beings. Subhuti, the Tathagata is one who speaks the truth, who speaks the actual, who speaks what is so, who does not speak what is false, who does not speak what is not so. And the other thing that I wanted to read is actually a list of the six paramitas, the six perfections, many of which the Buddha just mentioned in the Diamond Sutra. So there's dana paramita, which is often translated as uh, generosity, giving of oneself. Shila paramita is virtue, morality, discipline, proper conduct. Uh, Kshanti paramita is patience, tolerance, forbearance, acceptance, endurance, persistence. Virya paramita is energy, diligence, vigor, effort. Dhyana paramita is single-pointed uh, concentration, uh, contemplation sometimes used for uh, as a translation of the uh, word uh, meditation. And prajna paramita, which of course is wisdom or insight. I teach a, a course, Foundational Buddhism, it's called. And one of the things that I have my students do in that course is to take the six paramitas and come up with an action that the paramita counteracts. Okay, so you could say that greed is counteracted by uh, the perfection of uh, generosity, dana. Okay, the Buddha speaks of uh, primarily uh, patience in there, shanti, and tonight. Uh, when I left to enter the meditation room here, the news was on and uh, all I was hearing was stories of um, rioters uh, that basically attacked, held, held the capital siege, whatever it was, they occupied uh, the US Capitol building and uh, that brought up some emotions in me. And I'm happy to say that uh, at the conclusion of the meditation period, I was feeling less wound up about all of it. Um, but I realized that there's a dichotomy that's possible here for us as uh, Zen Buddhist practitioners. We have this ideal, and then there's the, wow, it would really be rocking to get hold of those three poisons. I'm really in the mood for a little anger and delusion tonight. But, as practitioners, we know better than that. 
we know that whenever we engage in that, we not only harm ourselves by incurring karma, but we're also potentially doing harm to another. And one of the prime mottos of the Five Mountain Order is do no harm. And sometimes we can't be full of loving kindness and equanimity and all of these other, other wonderful uh, Buddhist traits and qualities. But we can try not to do any harm. It's not always easy. Sometimes that will just arise and we have to wait for it to pass. But we have to realize the emptiness, not only in our own feelings, but in events. There is nothing inherently existent in any of this. There is no riotness to rioting. If that's a word, I don't know. I just sort of made that up. There's no um, permanence to the emotions that may have welled up today. So what we can do to the best of our ability, and maybe it won't be a perfection that we're uh, practicing, but maybe it'll be a good enough that we're uh, practicing for this day. We can do no harm. We may not be able to sit as impervious to everything as a statue of Buddha, where the little half smile is there, the house burns down, the ceiling opens up, and the vastness of the universe becomes apparent, and the smile stays there, and the Buddha is unmoving. We don't have to have that sort of um, extreme practice, especially on a day where emotions may be running high for some of us. But we can check ourselves when the emotions do start to run high and do start to take over. And we can at least stop short of doing any harm. Thank you.